Hey, this is Ina in Moving the Fight Back, and today I'm going to look at Mao Zedong's On Contradiction. Originally, I was just going to go right from On Practice to the Mass Line, but I realized that oftentimes On Practice and On Contradiction are read together, and I felt it would be that I should offer a, um, a summary, if you will, of the major themes of On Contradiction. I want to preface this also by saying that I, this work is rather easy to understand, it's rather short, and it's available free online. And I hope that this video can serve as almost a Cliff Notes version for any who are thinking of tackling this work, which I do recommend that you should do. Mao Zedong identifies two major world outlook, outlooks. One is the metaphysical, where things are looked at in, as isolated, static, and one-sided. And the things, in, whether in society, nature, or whatever, are seen as isolated from each other and changeless. Whatever change comes, it either decreases or increases the quantity of that thing. And change is seen as coming from the outside. It's not internal to that thing. On the other hand, we have the dialectical world outlook, or dialectical materialism. It looks at the development of things from the inside, the development of things that has self-movement, eternal change, or in a sense, the eternal contradictions of that thing. And the thing is connected to the surrounding things. Everything is interconnected and they interact upon each other. It's this larger totality. And this unity of opposites when the thing is the basic law of materialist dialectics. And social development is due to the internal contradictions of society, for instance, between the forces and relations of production, between classes, the capitalists and the proletariat, the old and the new. And the development of these constitutions propels society and leads to a process of supersession of the old society by the new one. Dialectics uh, teaches us how to observe and analyze as skillfully the movements of contradictions and things. And we use that analysis to find methods to solve those contradictions. Mao also looks at the universality of, co of contradiction. And this is, universality of contradiction is shown as two ways. One, contradiction exists in the development of all things in the process of their development. Two, the process of development of each thing is a movement of contra a movement of contradiction exists from the beginning to end. Every form of society, mode of thought, has its own particular contradiction with its own particular quality that is solved in a unique way. For instance, the contradiction between the worker and the capitalist is solved by socialist revolution, Russia 1917. The contradiction between feudalism and capitalism is solved by a democratic revolution, France 1789. But these processes change in the contradiction. Old processes and old contradictions disappear through development, and new ones, processes, and contradictions emerge, and you need new methods to solve them. And in study, we need to look at th uh, a thing as a whole, not one-sided subjectively. For instance, we can't just look at the worker in isolation. We need to look at the whole, the bourgeoisie, and any other classes that may exist. We need to see the totality. And in a war, you don't just look at yourself, you look at your enemy. You need to see all the forces arrayed, the good and the bad. For instance, it does no good to just hear good news if you're not willing to hear the bad news. And in contradiction you have stages of development. And there are different conditions at each stage of development. Some qualities become intensified in certain stages of development. Others are mitigated or even partly solved. And some new uh, contradictions emerge. If you don't know the stages of development, you can't deal with as many particular uh, contradictions and Marx you used uh, Mao looks at how Marx used um, contradictions to analyze capitalism. He looked at how Marx looked at the different stages of the development of capitalism. 
and Lenin did the same thing in his analysis of imperialism. In the development process of a social totality, of a larger complex, there are many contradictions, and one tends to be primary. It determines and influences all of the other contradictions. So in the world we live in, the primary contradiction would be that of capitalism, with the exploitation of surplus value. And that would influence how feudal classes would react to it, how the peasants would react to it, and so on and so forth. And in any contradiction, for instance, between that of the proletariat and the bourgeoisie, um, you have two contradictory aspects, again, the proletariat and the bourgeoisie, that are not equal. The development is uneven. It's not fixed. Of the two aspects, one is primary, the other is secondary. That means at some point in that contradiction, for instance, the bourgeoisie could be rather strong, the proletariat could be rather weak in its class forces. And if we look at this in Marx's theory, Marx's theory in a very simplified form is between the base, the material base, the economy, and the superstructure politics, ideology, and culture. And vulgar Marxism looks at the base as primary, as always the determining factor of the superstructure. And Mao says, yes, the base is principal, the principal part of the contradiction over the superstructure. Yet he's saying, if we have to see the other side too, and that the superstructure can be the principal and the decisive factor in the contradiction. That means, in a sense, politics, ideology, and culture can determine the economy. So, in a sense, both material forces, the economy, you know, the job you do, and your social consciousness, they, they're not separated things, and it's not a mechanical base determined superstructure. Social consciousness can determine uh, base, and they react upon each other in a larger social totality, and this propels a certain kind of movement. In a contradiction, there's an identity between the two opposites, proletariat and bourgeoisie, and one can't exist without the other, according to Mao, and there's a unity between them. So each of the two aspects of a contradiction, proletariat bourgeoisie, in the development process finds the presupposition of its existence in the other aspect. The proletariat finds its presupposition in the existence of the bourgeoisie. And both aspects coexist. And each of the two contradictory aspects tends to transform itself into the other. In a certain sense, yes. And they can't really exist without the other. And a contradictory aspect can't exist in isolation. You really can't have a proletariat with a, without a bourgeoisie. In seeking to realize its aims of the revolution, the proletariat, in emancipating itself, in a sense, abolished itself and its opposite, the bourgeoisie. And there's a relation, again, of identity and between the two. They exist in, they can't exist in isolation, and they struggle at the same time, obviously. And all struggles have a beginning and an end. There was not always a struggle between the bourgeoisie and the proletariat. And all processes transform themselves into their opposite, yet the stability of these processes is relative. The primary, again, there's, there's this struggle aspect. And in the course of that struggle, we, we, it can go rather either way, in a sense. Again, this was just a uh, basic Cliff Notes version of On Contradiction. It's available free online. I encourage you to read it. I'm hoping to produce a video rather soon of Mao on the mass line, because I've been rather interested in, as opposed to his interpreters, what Mao himself was saying on the subject. And I hope, again, if you if you would like, please request a work of Mao, Lenin, Marx, Trotsky, or someone else, and I'd be happy to try and either do a summary or review. Again, this is Ina. Until next.